Welcome to Sean and wait, what is this called? Um, I'm. It's uh. Who are you? Oh, I'm Carter. Do I know you? Sean, Sean and Carter have, have technical difficulties because Skype is awful. Skype is terrible. It's so I bad. Mentioned, I mentioned it to Sean. I believe Microsoft. They, it's got they, they, their hand is in this somehow. <laughs> or Michael Sarah's how. hand. Yeah, exactly. Um, They're in again, cahoots together. Cahoots. Cahoots. Uh, once again, to newer people who don't know where this comes from, hey, we're talking about Michael Sarah and you don't get it. Um, sorry. But Sean had exactly the same problem that I had the last time we recorded. Exactly the same. If you're having a problem where every time you try and do anything on Skype, like it's fine when you're just looking at it, but then you try and do something on it, go delete the Skype folder in the app data folder. Yep. After after you uninstall, delete that folder and then reinstall it. And you should be good for for how long? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Until it screws up again. Yeah, I found that solution the last time after a, quite a bit of searching. Um, yeah, it's it's a Windows Seven specific problem, so you know, <laughs> this is one of many reasons why maybe it is okay to just stay on XP <laughs> forever. <laughs> forever. Uh, or get a Mac. This this would never have happened on a Mac. XP is those those twins from The Shining. It's like play with us forever. Exactly. I mean, th like I there there will be servers running XP when our grandchildren are podcasting. <laughs> I'm sure of it. <laughs> and of course they will be. <laughs> or whatever the that whatever that is, you know, when we have grandchildren, probably won't be podcasting. It'll be you know thought casting. Right. Right. It'll be direct. It'll be the nanobots will broadcast it into your brain. Exactly. Exactly. Um, you'll watch your videos like like they'll be projected right under your eyes through your like futuristic contact lenses. That... Yeah. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I know. I know. Well, our hashtag SCHP has been awfully dry later, lately, so I'd like to encourage anyone listening to the this podcast to please send us a question or a comment with the hashtag SCHP because we are not the South Carolina Highway Patrol and we can't respond to those tweets. If you don't, well, if people don't start or continue to uh, have questions with the hashtag SCHP, we'll start talking about the South Carolina Highway Patrol tweets. Or we'll just be forced to always answer Ron's random questions. Yes. Like, does this dress make my butt look big? <laughs> Right, right, exactly. So or, that just makes me scratch my head, Ron. I don't, I don't have a we, response for that. We don't know. We don't know. Or um, why is SpongeBob the main character when clearly it's Patrick, who's the um, star? Yeah, you gotta get the rest of the joke in there. Who's the star? Um, so I, I actually tweeted this to Ron. I, I'm proud, maybe, maybe not. I don't know what, how I feel about this, but I have never seen an episode of. SpongeBob ever. See, and I started idea. watching SpongeBob immediately after it started because it was from the same guys who made Rocker's Modern Life, which is still <sighs> one of my favorite cartoons ever. One of the best cartoons of all time. Yeah, and I've seen it. I haven't watched. I probably haven't seen a new episode of SpongeBob in the last five years. But every time I've sat down and watched an episode, it's very amusing. And and it always seems just slightly edgy, which is what Rocker's Modern Life always seemed like. Mm -hmm. It was it was definitely meant for an older audience than it appeared. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, like, and I've I've not even seen snippets of SpongeBob. Like, I know that it's SpongeBob Patrick and that they live under the sea, and that is the extent of my knowledge. There, of there's a pineapple and a crab and stuff. Nope. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you you bring up Rocker's Modern Life. That is an amazing, amazing. Uh, cartoon and it's on netflix it if, you, is on if you have streaming it's there yeah um i read an article recently that uh rocco's modern life was actually an allegory against capitalism because of conglomo mm -hmm. yeah we own yeah. you was their we slogan mm -hmm. yep maybe i'll send you that and you put it in the link <laughs> okay you can read that article i'll um, add it to my dissertation to your right exactly uh Ron also asks, just just some colors. Pink, yellow, blue, or white, question mark. Well, white isn't a color, for being fair. 
White is not a color. That's true. That's true. Uh, and if, if our options are pink, yellow, blue, I, I got to choose blue. Yeah, I'm going to go with blue. I'm going to go with blue. My favorite color is usually like uh, that kind of like burnt orange that you see like some really nice looking cars painted that color. It's I love that color. color. I have a I have a big duffel bag that color. I love it. My col my favorite color is I don't I you know I don't have a favorite color. I really hate that people. <laughs> I don't hate this, but um, you know people per, people prefer colors. Like I prefer wearing this color, right? But I, like blue is my preferred color to wear. And if you open up my closet, it's like I have like a million blue shirts <laughs> and a couple of red ones. But it's I don't have like any affinity for blue or any particular dislike of other colors it's just i prefer to wear blue you're actually just colorblind yeah i've been hiding it all my life <laughs> and all my shirts are actually green and no one told me well thanks for the random questions ron thank you ron they thank make you, ron. us laugh yes also i wanted to i wanted to thank sean's mom for her very thoughtful comment on our last podcast video yeah i'll thank um, my mom too i guess yeah th thank you yeah yeah it sounds genuine um, if it's coming from you <laughs> exactly well so, so she we were talking about a, a, a random question of ron's about nostalgia right um and your uh sean's mom left the comment um I'm, I'll, I'll summarize it that she thinks that our feelings of nostalgia are um rare now because uh f because things are less rare movies television shows songs we can hear them all the time we it's harder to want right um, so, you know, she met, she mentioned that uh, in the 50s and the 60s, it was really exciting to see The Sound of Music or The Wizard of Oz because they only were on once. You could, you could see them one time a year, or you could see them when they were, well, obviously not The Wizard of Oz. Uh, you could see them when they were in the theaters. Um, Why didn't you so, just watch them on Blu-ray? Yeah, exactly. Streaming, Netflix. <laughs> so, they hadn't worked out the contract deal. I Yeah, exactly. Um <laughs> So I, I I agree I agree with that and it m made me think of something uh, about the holiday season. Um, I was traveling a lot this holiday season. I was on a whole bunch of planes to get back home, and I was talking with my mom about uh, air travel and how much I hate it and it's the worst. Ugh, I had a four-hour layover in Newark, New Jersey. <laughs> oh, poor New Jersey. <laughs> On the upside, I'd never been to Newark, New Jersey before, so I ticked that one off. I've been uh, there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think you're missing anything. Their, if their airport says anything about them, all right. Um, but I, I was talking with my mom about this, that uh, you know, I, I dislike this. I don't like flying. It's inconvenient. It's you know, it's just a bad experience overall. And... It's unnatural for us to get in metallic birds and fly miles over the earth. <laughs> we must Louis. return to carriages and horses. Exactly. Um, That's yeah, where I, you were I going would've... with that, right? Yeah, exactly. I would have really preferred to have driven 12 hours. Um, but in the 50s and the 60s, it was an event to travel. Oh, because yeah. Because you did it so infrequently. Dress up. It was... Pilots were like... Oh my God! Pilots today, it's just sort of like, oh yeah, he's an airplane pilot, Psh, whatever. It's like and everyone drink. offhandedly assumes that they're like they've had two drinks already for some reason. Exactly, they're professional. Like it, you know, flight attendants. It's like you know, it's <laughs> flight was glamorous in the fifties, and it, now it's just... it's it's basically a flying bus. It's a flight. Yeah, it, 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 exactly. You're crammed in there. You know, it's it's you know messy babies everything all of the complaints about flying alvin uh, and the chipmunks too <laughs> right it's like a horror it is and i i i think we've all probably overstate how bad it really is and it, it is like amazing that I louis ck fly. would be there going you're flying over the earth at 300 miles an hour you're 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 a greek myth right now <laughs> Did you see his special? His the Beacon Theater. Mm -hmm. I did not watch it yet. I bought it. I, I I've I've seen it. Having to watch it on the computer and because my wife wants to see it is kind of an inconvenient. I need to figure out a way to put it on my TV. Ah. I need to hook up uh, my laptop to the TV to watch it. 
I well, I watched it on my iPad. He has it. It's it's an I believe it's an HTML5 video on his website, so you can watch it right on, right on your iPad. He's genius. Thank you for using web standards. I appreciate. <laughs> not to say anything bad about Flash, but you know it doesn't work on my iPad and HTML5 does. So I, he must know enough about the technical stuff because he freaking edits his own show. Anyway, I'm sure there's plenty of other technical aspects aspects he takes care of himself. Yeah, definitely. Smart oh, guy. He, so, and did you see that uh, within the first like couple of days, he'd made a million dollars off of it? Yep. And what he was going to do with it? No. So, um, a quarter of it is going to his to pay for like the streaming fees, the web hosting costs, all that. That cost a quarter of a million dollars. Um, another quarter of it is going to his staff and everyone who helped him so he's giving them big bonuses uh 200 and i i, I might get this wrong i think then 200 he, he's keeping 230,000 for himself because he worked hard <laughs> and he deserves it and then the last 270 he is going to a variety of charities wow yeah he's a he's a super all right guy he really is he's he's lewd and obnoxious and hysterical and i love him he's a cultural treasure i i love him too i hope he yeah. i hope he sticks around yeah right. i i read about his his special being every year when he does like he wraps up the tour at the last spot he retires that act entirely that is the last time he will tell those jokes that's um that's awesome and then and, he starts uh, fresh that is that's the same thing that eddie Izzard does yeah i believe it so and th- they're just prolific coming out with these new this new stuff all the time. It's, and it's challenging, but I'm I that's that's the point and that's why it's worth it. Definitely. And I am just ashamed that I have not watched a single episode of his show yet. Oh my it god, you must. Been, it's fantastic. I got to do it. I'll do it. I'll do it sometime. I'll Good. find the time. Good. Okay. So what's up? <laughs> What's up? What's up, man? Oh, uh, XKCD turned a thousand, published their thousandth comic on Friday. Congratulations to them. Congra- congratulations, Randall, and anyone else who works works with them. Um, other than that, uh, not too much. Just just the end of American Horror Story, which like I really feel, I. F- Sean's mom, I think in the future, I will feel very nostalgic thinking about this first season of American Horror Story. See, that's what you can feel nostalgia for, like a firsthand experience that you've experienced with other people. Yeah. That's I mean, that's something that will never go away. Exactly. Like, Sean's, Sean's mom was talking more about, like, the feeling of excitement around certain things. And yeah, it's hard to get excited about something that happens all the time. But yeah, like, I think nostalgia generally is a social thing. And, you know, there'll always be social stuff. Yeah. Except now when I'm feeling nostalgic about American Horror Story 30 years from now, I can go back and listen to these podcast episodes. <laughs> and that will make you feel nostalgic. And I'll feel even more nostalgic. Exactly. Exactly. So it's over, man. It's over. Yeah. And it's way more over than I thought it would be based so, on everything that I've read about it. So you have, I, I, I take it you've been spoiled on season two. <sighs> I... I had no idea that they were really just going to wrap this season up. And I was, you and I were speculating about things that were going to happen. Right. That they were pointing to like clear indicators of the ways that the series was going. And it turns out we're wrong. We're completely wrong. Exactly. It's going Um, nowhere. It's going nowhere. This was a spoiler alert, everyone. If you don't want to be spoiled for season two, although I think everyone knows by now, uh, they're not continuing this story at all. They're going to go to a new house, new location, new cast. And not only that, but the themes from this season that we've built on of things like family, adultery, and like infidelity, that kind of stuff, they're basically, those are the the hauntings of that house. And Ryan and Brad say the next season will probably be diametrically opposite. Yeah, they're going to explore a whole nother slate of human sin. And... Yeah, exactly. Um yeah. Do you want to talk? Do you want to talk about the episode? Yeah. And then talk about the season two stuff and how we feel about how we feel about that. Yeah. Okay. So, so the the, the finale happened. The finally happened. Um, Afterbirth. And what'd you think? Did you like it? Controversial, I'd say. Overall, 
I liked it a lot. I was surprised by one thing, but then it turned out to be okay, and I hated the ending. I think that's very similar to my feeling on <laughs> on it. I um I so watch this episode or you know it, if if you've been following along and you haven't watched this episode yet, you should. Uh, it, it not a lot happens, I would say. I mean, Ben dies. First yeah, of all. yeah. Like in the first he, five minutes. Right. That was the part that I was. I was. I was like, he's made it this far. He's getting out, and I guess that'll be okay. Oh, he's dead. Right. Well, and they <laughs> they they did a you know they did a they pulled the rug out underneath us. We you know he had a gun and I was like, Oh my God, he's going to kill himself. So we can be with Viv and Viv and Violet convince him not to kill himself. And he's like, all right, I'm not going to go kill myself. So Ben walks out of the room and you think everything's good. And it's Hayden and some rando ghost with a noose and they hang him by the chandelier. Yeah. She's rounded up her cronies and yeah, she, she warned him. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like, I think, and also just for everyone who's like who's following a lot who's been following along with us and not watching the show and listening to my random theories um none of my random theories about ben or what's going on in the house proved to be true no okay. he didn't kill violet he's not dead he's not whatever you've got an overactive imagination my friend i was right about violet <laughs> <laughs> yeah well cause... you and a lot of other people you were not the only one well, whatever, but I, th I thought of it on my own. <laughs> yes, you did. You know, okay. Um, so, no. It, to, to alleviate your tension, Ben didn't kill Violet. Sorry. Yay. Sorry for dropping that into the, into the mix. <laughs> Making the waters and, murky. Right. So, after, after this goes down, Ben's all dead. He's all dead. Um, they become like a family. It was apparently dying was what they needed to do to come closer together as it's, a family. It's actually kind of sweet. It was kind of sweet. Um, they they band together. It, this is I, I tweeted this that the show does a little deconstruction of itself in the, in the middle. Another family moves in and they go all like Beetlejuice style with the other ghosts. Definitely, that was exactly what I thought of. Yeah. And it's just like when they moved into the house. Although this, oh, I had a major complaint about this. The son with the skateboard. He looked like he was 35 years old. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he looked like he was... He could have been the dad's brother. <laughs> I did not like that at all. Um, well, they wasted all their casting budget on, on Jessica and Dylan. Right, exactly. Um, and... <laughs> Moira is like all ready to yeah let's let's get all the good ghosts together basically and scared this family out of the house it's like well where was she with that when the Harmons moved <laughs> and she was she was all being sexy Moira and trying to you know screw with their lives so I guess I she's know. grown she's grown as a as a ghost or a... maybe because they arrived in turmoil yeah 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 so uh, and I still wouldn't put it past uh, I'm for oh my gosh! It's been two weeks. I'm already forgetting the names. Constance. I wouldn't put it. I still think she's a witch. Well, she's, you're allowed to think that because we're not going to find out for sure for years, if ever. Because we're not going to find out. Yeah. So the Harmons successfully scare the bejesus out of this family. Although they were aided by Tate, who was not really in on it. He was just like, I'm going to kill the brother so that Violet can be happy. He wanted uh he wanted her to have a smart young man to spend eternity with. I know. So sweet of him. He's um, always doing that, you know, killing people to make other people happy, he thinks. That's his that's his MO. Um <laughs> How's it worked out so far, Tate? Hasn't worked in, in no instances that worked out and the one time he tried to prevent someone from dying it turns out that that's exactly what she needed to get closer with her mother and father uh, he just can't any do anything right can't do anything right ben and viv have a great uh scene with the uh with the husband and the wife i can't i don't i don't know the name of the family i didn't pay attention uh where they like pretend to kill each other right it was it was pretty funny. There, there was disemboweling going on. It was pretty awesome. There was disemboweling. I um, I was laughing out loud for that whole 
sequence. It was awesome. They're they're they're, they're just they're they're just totally hamming it up for this family. Um, that was the, the point that I was like, this is just like Beetlejuice. <laughs> just like Beetlejuice. I love that movie. I think we've said his name three times now, by the way. So uh oh. Uh-oh. Hey, babes. <laughs> Michael uh, Keaton won't leave my house. <laughs> oh man, what were you saying? <laughs> so, so the family leaves, and the Harmons and all of the nice ghosts have like a very special wait, wait, Christmas American Horror Story. They like get a tree, and it's all nice, and they're happy, and singing, and uh. Who is it's a um, Hayden and Tate are outside. You know they they're like oh we, they're happy and we're not happy. And <laughs> we should scheme to do some you know, um, and that's basically how it ends. And Ex- and seriously, I wanted it to end right there. Like it uh, it back it did the camera on the back of the Harmons pulling away, and I think it even faded to black. And I was like, good. <laughs> it, did, it did fade to black because there was a title card three years later. Yeah, and then I was like, N- oh, oh, really? Oh, no? Oh. oh. <laughs> so it's it's Constance at her hairdresser's where he, she hasn't been presumably for three years. Right. She's been she taking said, care, care of her hair herself the whole time. Yeah, exactly. Um, and her With her witch powers. Told her witch powers and her baby that she stole from the Harmons that she's named Michael uh, and she gives a really over dramatic just corny speech to this hairdresser about like having a baby and how it's changed her life and she was destined for greatness but oh the greatness is going to be through my son right and all that and it's like, okay, fine, Constance, whatever. Just get your hair cut. And the hairdresser was looking. I think that the hairdresser had my expression on her face, <laughs> but for different reasons. <laughs> She's like, I just want to get paid and get this woman out of here. It's like, you're, you're crazy. And I'm like, I just want Jessica Lang to stop talking. And then we go back to her house, and there's just like a trail of blood in the hallway what where did this and there was like blood on the refrigerator what did what happened it was mike it was little mikey he murdered his his nurse and what does she say something like now now what am i gonna do with you now what am i gonna do with you and he's just got this he's covered in blood and he's got this like creepy smile on his face and it's like oh he is the antichrist great in the second before we saw him I half expected him to look like he was like 10 years old. Yeah. I Because yeah. his gestation period, blah, blah, blah. Like I was like, maybe he'll, he will have grown at a monstrous pace. But no, he was he just looked like a three-year-old. No, he looked like he was three. He looked like a three-year-old who just killed someone. Who just killed someone. I'm just like, no. And if we didn't know what we know about season two, I would have had lots of speculation about... You know, is he really the Antichrist? How are the Harmon are the Harmons gonna try and like break out of the house somehow? But it's like, all moot. It's all moot because no, it's not happening. That's not happening. No. Uh, nope. So, um Oh, one thing that one thing I we forgot to mention. Nora has the baby. The stillborn baby. It didn't actually this is great. It didn't die until after it was born. So right. It got baby. like a gasp of breath in and then bleh. And then it died. I think she said it, it. It had it had like one whimper and then it died. Um, so it's a ghost baby. So it's, it's gonna... so it's like a minute old for eternity. Right. <laughs> and it's like crying. Right. It's like got what, what was it? It's got colic. What babies cry? Yeah. Um. And sh- <laughs> we go down to the basement. Viv goes down to the basement and there's Nora and she's like, I hate this baby. Will you <laughs> take it? <laughs> The entire show, I need a babe. <laughs> She's like, I hate this baby. Get it out of my life. I haven't slept in weeks. <laughs> that was probably the, the, that was another one of the, I liked that. <laughs> the dramatic irony there. The, the, her whole motive was a baby. And now she's like, oh, I'm a terrible mother. I would not want to be a baby at all. Where's the maid? Exactly. Well, like she's she's totally forgotten. I, I think Moira speculates that you know she was just stuck on "I want a baby" because like that's what happened when she, that's what she was thinking when she died was you that's know, the ghost baby. curse. 
Right. That they just have yeah. to repeat whatever they did. Right, exactly. And, you know, we, we saw in the flashbacks to the 20s that she, she didn't do anything with that baby. That maid took care of the baby. <sighs> I read in Entertainment Weekly that they are considering, they have always considered from the beginning when they change locations that some of the supporting actors will go along for the ride and play other characters. I I saw that too. Um, so this might not be the end for some of the other people we've seen in the house. Yeah, I like I I like I I I bet they won't use her, but I would really like them to uh, continue to use the actress who plays Moira. I think that she gave a just phenomenal performance throughout the entire series. The old, the old, old one Moira. or the young old one? Moira. Old, old Moira. <laughs> well, who knows? Um, Fantastic I, performance means multiple things. Right, exactly. I mean, and there's no way that Connie Britton, Dylan, Dylan, what's his name? McDermott. <laughs> McDermott. There's no way that them or Jessica Lyon are going to be in the new one, I don't think. Nope. That was nope. that was basically what he was saying in the interview, that yeah. they were able to get them by guaranteeing that they would only need to be in the first season. Right. So, um, yeah, I'd love to see old Moira some more. Um, I tweeted this at you without context, and you... I just, <laughs> I, and I was so confused. I was like, what? Um, she plays Barney Stinson's mom on How I Met Your Mother. And I was watching How I Met Your Mother, like, very close to after watching American Horror Story. And I'm like, oh, my God, Moira is Barney's mom. Moira is Barney's mom. And I tweeted Sean, and he's like, Barney who? <laughs> I didn't like, think you meant the big purple dinosaur. I just, I thought you were talking about a character on the show. And I was like, I don't remember who Barney uh, is. Yeah, yeah, I should have, I should, I should have made that. Clear. And and the problem is, I don't even know who Barney Stinson is because I haven't never watched How I Met Your Mother. Right. <sighs> Very sad. How I Met Your Mother is a huge part of my life. Um, <laughs> huge part of my life. Uh, so so yeah, speculation on season two is just moot. Like, who knows what it's gonna be? There's there's no point. He he said that uh, in February or March they will announce details, probably including casts. Right. So this is something I was thinking of. Um, if uh, if it starts in in the summer, it, it, ho- hopefully it'll start in uh, late August, September, like this one did. But, yeah, in time um, for Halloween. In time for Halloween. Um, because if, if it started much earlier, it would be eligible for a, a 2012 Emmy. <laughs> and it would be like competing against this season. <laughs> so... <laughs> I was like, well, I hope they do it. Like, the, the eligibility period ends, uh, like, June. Um, I'm sure FX has notified him. Yeah, I'm sure. So, uh, so yeah, the uh, so everyone knows, and they can put it on their calendar, July 19th of this year will be when the Emmy nominations are announced. So we'll see if any of our any of our friends get, uh, get a nod. I'd expect one for Jessica Lange and potentially one for Moira. Yeah, definitely Jessica Lange. Definitely just going. Yeah, and old, and old Mora for supporting. I would uh, maybe maybe the others. I'm not. I'm I'm not quite sure. And I don't know if I I would be doubtful that the show would get um an outstanding uh outstanding television show for a drama. I bet it won't. It's up against all those amazing TNT dramas, right? Yeah, and I mean like there's like Boardwalk Empire and. There's just way too much that's significantly better quality. Not the TNT dramas, I was joking. Uh, well, I was serious about Fort Fucking Fire. Yes, I know. <laughs> and other shows like on HBO, whatever. Uh, Game of whatever, fantasy. Game of, Game of blah. How's that book uh, reading going? I'm like... You're flying through 150 it. 150 pages then? I try to read a little bit every 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 night. <laughs> every month. Every month, I'll be done by the time. Uh, I'll be, I'll be by the time the series time. wraps. Right, exactly. Uh, I'll wait. I'm gonna. I'm gonna wait for the movie. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> um. Yeah, and I. I bet. It, I don't. I don't say this, but I will anyway. Individual episodes for writing might get might get something for American Horror Story, but still. Okay. Yeah, that's against. possible. It's possible, more likely than the show itself, but it's still going to have a really stiff competition this year. So, and there's a whole half a there's a whole the season is nowhere near over. So, <sighs> farewell, American Horror Story. You yeah, are... let's hope that uh, the second season intrigues us. Right. So, what what are are you upset 
that it's not going to continue with the Harmons. I, I think that uh, one of the main drawing factors of any serial drama is getting to come back and seeing the next chapter in the story. So the fact that they're abandoning this story for the next season definitely is a is a check in the negative column for me. That doesn't mean I, I won't watch it. Right. But getting in, invested in another whole crop of characters kind of makes me sad. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, like, I'm not... You know, obviously people on the internet are crazy and everyone's like, oh, I'm not going to watch season two. They've ruined it. They, they took, you know... <laughs> All the internet people took their ball home <laughs> from the play from the internet playground on this one. I'm not angry. I agree that I'm. I I would feel differently if I had known from the beginning that this was going to be one season. If they had said like this is going to be kind of like mini series and we're going to cover like different stories across seasons, then I would have been like, oh okay. Well, they are saying that now. They're saying it now, but they didn't say it, you know, when when we started. So I, uh, I think they knew it, but they weren't explicit right. with it. Right. Well, which means, you know, we could get really super engaged and involved, and then they can pull, you know, pull the rug out from underneath us. I've used that metaphor twice this part. <laughs> <sighs> I'll watch season two. I don't have anything to watch now, though. I guess I should watch Louie. I guess so. We can't cover that on the podcast. Um. No. For a number of reasons. <laughs> For any number of reasons. But we should get back to covering films on the podcast because we kept talking about it and we kind of got away from it. We got away from that. You had a great idea. Yeah, yeah but the problem was I we tried to do Coen Brothers films and I don't think anyone was excited except us. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But I think that people will be excited about the idea you had because it's much geekier. Yeah, I we have we have two series ideas, and mine was I realized the Avengers comes out in a couple months, and the perfect like Sean and Carter of a podcast activity could be to watch the, is it did I figure out it was five movies that are the lead lead into the Avengers? Would that be Iron Man, Iron Man Two, Captain uh, America? Yes, and uh, Thor. Thor and the incredible hawk incredible hulk so we can make four weeks of those four franchises incredible hulk is he yep. an avenger yep, i didn't yep, know yep. that he is oh, right. the movie that is the the lead in for the avengers is not the 2003 ang lee movie it's the more recent mm, one okay. with what's his face the australian guy captain nemo from star trek <laughs> captain nemo from star trek <laughs> Oh, no. I'm sorry. It's Captain Nero. I just had to say Nemo. Nemo, Captain Nero. I still don't know. What is what I don't know. It's that uh it's the guy. Oh, it's, who's Captain Nero? Captain Now I'm just making stuff up. Is he in Starfleet? No, I'm totally right. It is Captain Nero. Oh, Eric Bana. Eric Bana. I In the I, Avengers, I, however, I, that okay. part will be played by Mark Ruffalo for some reason. <laughs> Just picked another ethnic looking <laughs> male actor. Yeah, three different Hulk characters in three movies played by three different actors. Whatever. Okay. But anyway, um, yeah, that one. Well, everyone's super excited for it because it's a Joss, Joss Whedon flick. Yeah, I saw a, a different full trailer for it before Mission Impossible 4 that I hadn't seen yet, and I just got even more excited. I'm just going to put out there that I'm not super excited for the Avengers, but I'm totally down for this. I'm more excited for his upcoming horror movie. His upcoming finished a year ago horror movie. Whatever. I know. I know. I know. I'm super excited for that. Starring uh, Josh. <laughs> yeah, the thing. yeah, I can't. What's yeah, his last name? Bradley, Bradley Whitford. What's Josh's last name? Josh Lyman. Josh Lyman. Oh, what a so. great character. He is a great character. He, he he remained great even in the bad parts of The West Wing, I think. Yeah. I liked his – I mean, the, that show so – this is what – I mean, this is why What's-His-Name left Rob Lowe, because that show became, like, the Josh Lyman show. Oh. He was, <laughs> he was the main character by the end. Yeah, I hadn't – I have never watched past uh, Aaron Sorkin's exit. Um, It's worth it, but there's some bads. There's yeah. – got to be prepared for yeah. the crap. Season five is 
utter, utter nonsense. Well, it started with the kidnapping of the president's daughter, which was enough to make me stop. Well, like the thing about that, by every by, by if you're still listening right now, you consider this like the after dark. We're done with topics. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm just talking now. But the, the thing about um, that was so they went with the whole like she was kidnapped by Middle Eastern terrorists. The, Sorkin revealed in the commentary on that episode that he was going to have it be have, be totally different, and that she actually it was um, Leo, I think. No, no Nancy. Nancy in that episode said, like, I bet she's, like, tied up in the back of a muffler shop somewhere. And she would, like, it was home, it was American, like, extremists who had kidnapped her because of, I, whatever, like, I think because of the American involvement in couldn't do. I know the show way too well, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, you're a anyway, political he, nerd. Yeah, well, he was, he was going to have it be more, much more interesting than the way that uh, the, the new showrunner, ugh. Who ended up running it? I don't remember, but they went into a really crappy direction. Yep, that was when I stopped, and I someday I know I'll get back to it. It's on Netflix streaming, I think. I would like to see what happens to Josh and Leo and those guys. There's there's a lot of a lot of a lot of laughs, a lot of love. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are I'll, we talking I'll... about friends or? Oh, well, I don't know. Um, it's worth it. So yeah, Avengers. We're gonna do that. Most of them are on streaming, right? Yes. I I, I own Just, Iron Man and Iron Man 2. I'll buy them on iTunes. I know at least Iron Man 1 used to be on streaming. Yeah, but these days you never know. Yeah, I know. it's Things are disappearing all the time. And then the other idea that we had was, to, I think this was your idea, was to watch all the Star Wars films. Yeah. In, some, some in Star Wars chronological order so that we can end with the, the good stuff. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, because if we ended with the bad stuff, I would feel crappy. <laughs> okay, well, like our, Iron yeah. Man 1 is not on streaming, but 2 is. Okay. Go figure. Okay, so I'm sure our audience has ready access through some means to Iron Man 1. I'm not going to encourage some of the... some of them, but... Incredible they Hulk is not. Uh, I'm going to say that Captain America is probably not. Yeah, I would doubt it. And four? Nope. That's I would say that's a doubtful. Nope. But Hellboy is. That's a great movie. Too bad Hellboy he's not in the Avengers. Oh, he should, he'd be the best Avenger. He would be awesome to, to have in that, that mix. That character love, is great. I love Hellboy. Love it. Oh, we should watch that. Was the sequel was good. the sequel ruined by Seth MacFarlane for you, or was it okay? I didn't watch it. Okay. <laughs> I was too I was like, mm -mm, nope, can't do it. <laughs> I had enough faith in Guillermo to to check it out, and it and it wasn't bad, but it was not the first movie. I there's no way it could be. No way it could be. All right, well, I think that's a. I think that's the end of the podcast. That's the end. So what what is the movie plan for next week? Um, I I want to watch Iron Man. You you're already in your game. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's knock it out. Yeah. Let's do Iron Man. Um, Good, because Alicia also... was Alicia actually put the idea in my head over Christmas vacation. We were just like sitting around watching movies a bunch, and we have Iron Man two on the shelf, and I've never opened it. I got it for last Christmas, and she was like, "Let's watch this," and I was like, "I have an idea for that. Let's not watch it yet." And she was like, "Oh, <laughs> oh, so you've never you have you never seen Iron oh, Man? Oh no, 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 we've we've seen it, but it's been oh okay, okay, it's been since whenever it came out in theaters. Okay, yeah, um, I'm uh yeah." I had Although to see it. Robert De Niro it. is probably one of my... He might be my favorite actor. Robert De Niro? Robert De Niro? <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. Downey Jr. is probably my favorite actor. Well, Bo Robert Bobby De Niro's there. up there, but... He's up there. He's up there. <laughs> Downey Jr. Um, yeah, I love those movies. I haven't seen Incredible Hulk, Thor, or Captain America, so those will be completely new to me. I haven't seen Hulk or Captain America. Yeah. Okay. So That's I can't cool. speak for them. Thor yeah. was brilliantly parodied in, a, in the last episode of South Park of last year. Oh, really? Yeah, they basically pulled the plot out of it and made fun of it. And then even the Natalie Portman character was still Natalie Portman. <laughs> it was just Natalie Portman. And they called her <laughs> Natalie Portman. Ah! They're brilliant. We'll have to talk about that episode when we do that one. Um, I haven't seen that one. I I haven't seen a South Park since the one where I thought that they were going to cancel the show. 
<laughs> when everyone did. Yeah. They right. made they made they had so much fun with that. Yeah. They said um, they do things like that because whenever they leave for the summer or whatever, they never have any idea what they're going to what they're going to do when they come back. So they just do whatever they want. And then when they come back, they're just like, "Okay, well, where do we pick it up from here?" Okay, well, let's do this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. That's no great. plan. No plan at all. That's they're the awesome. anti-American horror story. Right, which was meticulously planned, apparently. Um, I I didn't mention this, but I, I did see Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Did you? Yes, I did. So were you more satisfied, less satisfied? Compared to the Swedish version? Yeah. It was definitely better for me than the Swedish version. Um, Alicia was really bothered by Daniel Craig's accent for some reason. I never, I didn't even think about it twice. Neither did I. I, it was overly long and i i was i had a hard time getting into it it was long and it had i did not like the beginning and it wasn't just because of the title sequence it was because it had a very very short scene then the title sequence and then it just felt like a weird way yeah. to start the movie yeah the, those titles were ballsy um i didn't think it worked but you know he wanted a feminist version of a james bond right opening right um good music though i, I bought the soundtrack yeah trent trent does a good job mm -hmm. yeah i agreed i agreed um he'll, I he'll get nominated else, for score again yeah no oh, definitely you know a movie which was excellent which i highly recommend that i i saw over uh over the break <laughs> basically um is uh margin call okay I would definitely recommend that to anybody. It was excellent. That's about one of the election counts. Mm, no, 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 no. It's about uh, it's 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 about uh, the financial collapse. Oh, okay. It's, it's Kevin. It's like Kevin Spacey, Demi Moore, um, the guy who played Chaucer in A Knight's Tale, who I don't know what his name is. <laughs> um, who else? There's Paul Bettany, of... Jeremy Irons, Zach Quinto, Asif mm -hmm. Mondvi. Is he playing a serious role? Yeah, he plays like a, a quant. He's like an analyst on Wall Street. Oh my God! And Stanley Tucci, I have to see this movie. Stanley Tucci, it was oh, it was really good, um, and also like very like I think made very clear to people who might not know a lot about the financial collapse, like what happened. It's always nice when a movie is able to do that. Yeah, and and not like a preachy sort of bang you over the head with it kind of way. Kind of like uh, all the president's men. Mm -hmm. Does a nice objective. Yes. View of I it. Agree. Yeah. Great movie. Great movie. All right. Well, good Iron picks. Man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Iron Man. I gotta. I gotta go. I gotta go train some some kids. All right. You have fun. You kids watch Iron Man for next time, and we'll see ya. <sighs> all right. Bye. 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 We'll see ya. <sighs> all right. Bye.